Hey, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I pray that you guys have enjoyed your afternoon so far and enjoyed this beautiful day we've been blessed with. Uh, we're grateful to God once again to be able to come today with a new segment on uh, Tuesday Talk with T. Uh, it is 2 o'clock, and um, I'm grateful that you guys, uh, well, hopefully you will be joining me soon. And we're talking about on today's topic today, we're going to talk about why do I doubt myself? The topic is, why do I doubt myself? And basically with this topic, we're going to be discussing things such as um, making conscious decisions, uh, uh, doubting ourselves through our fears and, and just simple doubts and, and, and anxieties and things of that nature. We're going to concentrate on those things. Uh, a lot of times, especially with the decision making, sometimes we do doubt ourselves on how we make decisions and um, why it's having to come to lay at our doorstep that we have to make certain decisions so we're going to talk about it um once again the topic is why do i doubt myself uh and every week as i always do i give you an encouraging word uh for the week and the encouraging word is found in one of my favorite uh, passages of scripture psalm 27 and 1 it says the lord is my light and my salvation whom shall i fear the Lord is the strength or the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Uh, that is uh, found in Psalm 27, verse 1. Hey, Tom. Glad you're always on board, girl. Uh, once again, the uh, um, the uh, topic today is uh, why do I doubt myself? We're going to uh, discuss conscious, making conscious decisions, talk about our fears and things. And I'm going to repeat uh, the uh, encouraging word again, which is once again Psalm 27, verse 1 it says, The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength or the stronghold of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Okay, so let's just let's just talk about it. Uh, we'll try to keep it under 30 minutes uh, today, uh, but we're just going to go with how uh, we're going to be led. Uh, once again, the topic is Why do I doubt myself? Now, we all, all of us, and I don't care who you are, but we've all have come to a place in our life where we've had to really heavily depend on God to hold us up. I don't care who you are. Hey, Ebony, I don't care who you are. We've all have come to a place at some point in our lives that we had to really heavily depend on God to hold us up. Uh, we've always uh, uh, went through our life uh, uh having the unexpected, you know, things come up and we may not understand and it knocks us to our knees. And so we, we, we have always got to a point where God, I need you now. If you haven't got to that point yet, as the old folks will say, keep on living, it'll get to you. Uh, so we, we heavily depend on God to hold us up and, 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 and we depend on him to, through making this, uh, difficult decisions about, uh, for instance, where uh, what's next for our, uh, our life? For those who are younger, uh, what's what's next for my life? You know, where do I go from here? Uh, uh, whether I get married, whether I stay single, you know, those type of decisions. Whether I have children, um, uh, we also depend on God. You know, through making uh, difficult decisions uh, about like surgical procedures. You know, a lot of us. Um, have gone through surgical procedures, whether uh, for ourselves or for someone that we hold dear to our heart, uh, our spouse, our significant other, our children, our parents, our dear friend. Uh, you know, sometimes we've been put in place where we have to make tough decisions. Even in that, you know, um, uh, even uh, uh, through helping us understand why we're going through hurt and pain and, and why things are happening to us and why we're the ones going through the hurt. Uh, so we, sometimes it's okay to ask God why. You know, the Bible even teaches us when, you know, when you, when you want to know things from God, it's okay to ask God. for. Well, you know, a lot of people uh, feel like you shouldn't ask God for anything, but the Bible teaches us that we can ask God for whatever. You know, uh, if any man wants to know, let him ask. You know, so, uh, so yeah, we, we, uh, gone through things, some difficult decision making that we've had to simply just bow down on our knees and ask God, God, help me on, on this decision. Help me, uh, uh get through what I need to get through. Help me, uh, make sure I'm making the right decision. So, and, and we do have a sense of fear about most things about that. Uh, and we still trust God to hold us up. Uh, I, I don't know about you guys, but I depend on him for a whole lot in my life. Uh, I've gotten to an age to where uh, sometime I might have to go through some things to where I have to say, God, I need your help on this because I'm not sure what I want to do with this. So I depend on him heavily. I have always depended on him for my life. But now as I get older, I find things uh, that... Um, 
uh, calls me to, to ask God, okay, God, what do I need to do on this? How do you want me to go? God, what should I say to this person? God, how is it that, that, that I can help this person out? And at the same time, I'm, I'm assured that what I'm saying to them is right or the right decision. You know, we're still talking about why do I doubt myself? Because yeah, we do doubt ourselves on a lot of times when we think about things. We want to make sure we say the right things, do the right things, react in them in the right manner so we don't scare people off or even ourselves. Okay. So, uh, I don't know about anybody else, but I, I've gone through a lot. I've gone through a lot in my lifetime and, and somewhere I, I've had to make a decision, uh, uh, at the moment and it felt like hell at that time. And, and I felt so confused, uh, when I, when after the decision was made. So I, I've been there. I, I've been to a place where God, I, I don't know if this is right for me. I don't know. Should I have said this? Should I have made that decision? And we all at some point have did that. So, but I had to learn that I had to lean on the one who I say I trust to carry me through some of the most difficult times in my life. If I tell people that I trust God, I have to really trust God. And I have to show that I do trust him. Not so much to show man, but if I show God that I trust him, man would see that I trust him. So so uh, we all have, have, have been through uh, things in that nature to where we've had to make decisions and we've gone through fears and we've gone through doubt. So once again, and the topic is why do I doubt myself? Especially those of us who walk with God. Why do I doubt myself when I know I can lean and depend on the one who I say I trust? So why do I doubt myself? Uh but, but we've all been there. We've all been there and, and life still doesn't get any easier for us. No, it doesn't. So but most decisions, listen now, most decisions uh that we make are not black and white. And it leaves us with strong, powerful, and at times uncomfortable emotions. Yes, it does. But but when but when making decisions, uh conscious decisions, uh we need to consider the best reasoning for the decision we're about to make. Uh, that whether it's the one that we can live with or is it the one uh, we would ultimately regret. Let me help you out. There are some decisions that we probably have made in the past and we regretted it when we made the decision. I'm pretty sure the problem maybe 8 out of 10 people have done that. That if you made a decision on something, then you regretted it later. Uh, but, but let me let you, let me tell you, don't let that define you because you made one bad, what you consider as a bad decision. Uh, it, it doesn't define who you are because you may think it's bad at the time, but it could have been the right decision. But even if it was a bad or wrong decision, keep it going, you know, and just ask God, God, I'm sorry, maybe I, I shouldn't have done this. Or maybe tell the person that you had to make the decision for, I'm sorry. But keep it moving. You don't need to just shut down because that was one, what you consider wrong decision that you made in your life. So, so you have to understand it's important, it's important, it's important to realize how we need God in matters of decision making. I don't care who you are. You can't do this on your own. I've been there. You cannot. You cannot do these things on your own. So it helps when you depend heavily on God to help you with your doubt. And we've all been there, like I said. But if you trust him, if you trust God, he will guide you. He will guide you and help you to lean on him before you make a mistake on your decision making. First of all, go to God first. Sometimes we get ahead of God and we make these decisions ahead of him without even consulting him. And then all of a sudden we make that decision and now, okay, God, I'm sorry, but you didn't, dis you didn't discuss that with him before you made the decision. Yeah, sometimes we make that mistake. So always, always go to him. Pray about it first before you uh, make a, a, especially a conscious decision. Uh, and, and take and that would help take away your your doubt. That would help take away your doubt. For instance, when when, when you when you're facing a life changing decision regarding surgery, okay, and 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 make sure that you are counseled by your surgeon, mm -hmm, uh, who will perform that procedure, and you are confident and assured that you are in capable hands. I, I need to say that again. When you are facing life-changing decisions regarding surgery or some type of surgical procedure, make sure you are, con are counseled by the surgeon who will perform that procedure and you are confident and assured that you are in capable hands. 
we, we must do that. Uh, the one thing I tell people as a nurse that, and I make sure I let them know that before you go into the procedure room, you, procedure room uh, uh, excuse me, the surgery room, make sure you take God with you. Make sure you take God with you. Make sure you pray to God before you enter into that operating room. Make sure you have talked to God before you left your house. If you aren't able to talk to him and, and you're most of make sure the person that's taking you for that procedure pray and talk with God in your behalf. But make sure you take God with you in that room. I promise you, you, you have a sense of peace that, that, that comes over you and, and everything will feel like that I'm, I'm in capable hands. I have uh, uh, the, the last surgical procedure I had, uh, and, and my husband and I, we used this particular doctor uh, all the time. We love him to death. Why do we love him? First of all, he's a praying man. He always, he always, before he starts the procedure, may I pray with you? <sighs> yes, sir, you sure can. And he leads the prayer. So, so we know at that moment, we're in capable hands. Okay, that's, that's just so important. Uh, make sure you feel God's presence with you. Make sure you feel his presence with you. And, and he will be there with you when you trust him to be there. Make sure you feel the presence of God with you when you enter into that room. Okay, and it's okay. Listen, it's okay to say, I'm not scared, but I have some concerns. It's, it's really okay. Uh, a lot of times people say, okay, where's your faith? My, okay, sometimes our faith can take a hit, people. <laughs> you know, it's not so much as a lack of faith. Sometimes our faith can take a hit. We're going to talk about that in a moment as well. But it's okay to say, I'm not scared, but I, I have some concerns. And we've all, we've all been there. I don't care who you are. You can be the biggest of saints, uh, and, and you know, I mean, to the point where you feel like you can walk on water like Jesus did. <laughs> but there are times we have said, I'm scared, but I do have some concerns. Okay? So, so, and we're all human. We're all human, and, and we would not always feel confident. Okay? We all have some form of fear. Yes, we do. So, so, so you don't need to be uh, uh, in a danger to be scared. You don't need to be in danger to be scared. You know, uh, uh, we get scared because of what we imagine could happen. Yeah. And sometimes my mind would take us to places it, does, it doesn't need to take us, but it does. It happens. It happens. Uh, the more scared you feel, the, the scarier uh, things will seem. Yeah. We've all had that type of fear. I don't care who you are. We've all had that type of fear. Okay. Uh, fear, di fear dictates the actions you take. And actions motivated by fear falls into four categories. These four categories are freeze, fight, flight, or fright. I'm going to say that those four categories, of, uh, these, these fears fall into four categories. We freeze, we fight, we might take flight, or we're frightened. Okay, so 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 freeze means you, you stop what you are, are doing and focus on the fear for uh, stimulus to decide what to do next. You know, uh, so you you just you just freeze. Okay, what am I to do? And I don't know about any of you, but I've been there where I just stopped in my track. I froze at that moment. Okay, I froze at that moment. And and next, uh, you choose either to fight or flight. And everybody's familiar with the flight of, of, of uh, fight or flight syndrome. You decide whether to deal with the threat directly uh, or, or work around it. You know, everybody's had that fight or flight. Okay, uh, uh, when the fear is overwhelming, you experience fright. When it's just overtaking you, you you experience a uh, 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 fright. You know, uh, you, you're afraid. You need to fight, nor you flee. So you just fright. Okay. So, so in fact, you do nothing. Uh, uh, you, well, you you obsess over things such as okay, if you on a job and you get laid off, or, uh, and and then you complain it, but but you take no action. You you talking, but there's no action you taking. Okay, but being continuously in a fright mode can lead to hopelessness or depression because you're not doing anything. Okay, the fear can be as much an ally 
as it can be an enemy. Okay? And fear of fear can keep you locked in a cage of insecurity. So how do we overcome that? How do we overcome that? Uh, so so why, we talk about, so why do I doubt myself? Well, you know, how do we overcome some things, you know? How does this doubt, you know, how do we get away, get this doubt away from us that uh, don't, uh, and we don't want it to uh, allow it to be taken over us? How, why do I doubt myself, okay? Especially when I say I, I have put my total trust in God, Okay? So let's look at, we're going to look at six things. Uh, uh, we're going to consider uh, six things uh, when doubt comes in. We're going to consider that. Okay, y'all, y'all, uh, listen real good. I hope this helps someone out. Number one, number one is identify your limiting beliefs. Identify your limiting beliefs. So our beliefs are our roadmap to life. What we believe, you know, it takes us far. Okay. Whatever, you know, whatever our belief system is, it takes us far in life, okay? Uh, they can take us in bold new directions or they can cause us to feel like we are just treading water, uh, too scared to go after what we really want. Uh, and if you're in that treading water category, examine your limiting beliefs should be at the top of your list for how to overcome self-doubt, okay? Once you identify what's holding you back, you can change your mindset. You know, I'm one of those that, that believe in you can change your mindset. I, I'm, I'm an advocate for that. Uh, you can change your mindset. I don't care what the devil uh, kind of trick he put on you. You can change your mindset. Yes, you can. Anything negative that's going on in your mind, you can swip, You can take that out and put something positive. Okay, so identify your limiting beliefs okay number two change your self-talk yeah we now we, yeah we talk to ourselves sometimes yes we do i don't care who you are doesn't mean we plum crazy a, 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 a cuckoo for cocoa puffs but yeah we talk to ourselves sometimes yes we do yeah. and our words create uh our reality okay and that includes both the words we say and the words we think you know, sometimes, you know, we say things and we open up our mouth, you know, it comes out. But then sometimes we're thinking about some things that we're trying to say, okay, maybe I shouldn't say that, but I'm thinking it. Okay? So, so identifying your, your limiting beliefs is the first step. So now you must fight back against them. Changing your self-talk is powerful. It's a powerful way to turn your self-doubt into self-confidence. Tell yourself what you're able to do. Tell yourself that you're more than a conqueror. Tell yourself that I can do this. T yeah, talk to yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror and tell yourself. Make sure the things that you're telling yourself is positive. Things. Don't knock yourself down. Build yourself up. So make sure you change yourself talking to something that's confident. Okay? Stop believing everything your inner critic says. You know, that, that inner you know, sometimes you just see the cartoon where you got an angel on one side and a devil on the other side. You know, knock that devil off and, and start listening to what the angel is telling you, so to speak. Okay, so 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 stop believing everything your critic, your inner critic is saying and argue with it. You know, tell them, oh, now you a lie, the devil is a lie. Start arguing with that. Say, so, okay, you're not able to do You know that's too big for you. The devil is a lie. Yeah, start, start, start changing. So eventually, your inner critic will turn into your inner champion. Y'all got that? Okay. Number three, focus on your desires. Focus on your desires. See, some folks will tell you that life is found in a dance between your deepest desire and your greatest fear. Some folks may say that, but discovering how to overcome self-doubt means giving more power to your desires than to your fears. Mm -hmm. uh, and when you are more afraid of what you're going to miss out on that, on, on that uh, of any negative consequences that will come from failure, that's when your life leaps from ordinary to extraordinary. So tell yourself, I can do this. Whatever the decision you happen to make. Tell yourself, I can do this. Whatever uh, uh, thing you have to do when you walk on your job, and it's something that you've been wanting to say, tell yourself, I can do this. 
and I can say it in the right way, and I can leave out of that boss office or, or the supervisor's uh, area, I can do this because I'm confident in knowing who I am. And I will stop doubting myself. Number four, number four, is surround yourself with support. Surround yourself with support. No one masters life by themselves. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. No one masters life by themselves. We are not an island unto ourselves. We need somebody in our life. We need to touch people. Okay? So no one masters life by themselves. And to learn how to overcome self-doubt and climb to the peak of achievement, you need people to lift you up. I don't care who you are. You, you need to find someone that, that, that's going to speak positive in your life. You need people to lift you up. So find someone who has what you want and emulate them. Okay? And, and minimize relationships that bring negativity into your life and surround yourself with positivity and support instead. You know, I've talked about uh, uh, making sure you don't hang around negative people, I think, in one of my segments. I, I'm a firm believer. I can't deal with negative people. That they're negative all the time. I, I can't deal with that. You know, I I won't deal with that. Y'all excuse me, take some water. But I won't, I won't deal with that. I won't deal with being around negative people. I can't. Why? Because I don't want to be pulled down to their level. You know, these are people that they don't have anything good to say. Every time they talk with you, it's always something negative. I, I can't deal with that. So I'm going to set myself around positive people. Around positive people. That, that, that it says you need to surround them uh, for support. We're talking about uh, why do you doubt yourself. So don't get around other people that doubt themselves as well. That don't match. Why am I going to get around people that's, that's even worse than I am? Mm -mm, I can't. Okay, number five. Take action. Decisiveness or, or certainty is a sign of confidence. Leaders, leaders, you know, know that at some point you need to stop wondering how to get rid of self-doubt and take action. Yes. Uh, stop making excuses. Stop making excuses. We're the world's worst. Stop making excuses. Uh, stop seeking advice from every friend and acquaintance. It's called you got to discern what you're listening to. You know, making sure that, you know, I don't need to go to 10 people for one issue that I have. Because I'm going to get 10 different answers. So I want to make sure that I'm getting to, going to someone that I totally trust that would give me the best advice. Especially if I'm going through something doubtful. And, I, and I'm wanting to make sure that I'm, I'm, I'm in a place to where... I'm strong enough to make a decision and my fears are gone. So I, I, I need to talk to someone that's going to help me in that or at least be a sounding board. So I'm not going to go to any and everybody. Okay. So, so stop seeking advice. Stop seeking advice from every friend and acquaintance and start working towards real actionable goals. Okay. And it's okay to start small. Okay, and the more you achieve, the more you will build confidence and eliminate self-doubt for good. Okay, so take action. And finally, uh, number six. Number six says, build resilience. Build resilience. So setbacks are part of any transformation. And if you don't hit a wall once in a while, you're not pushing hard enough. That's true. Uh, the difference between those who know how to overcome self-doubt and those who let it go, uh, let them hold them back is inner strength. The difference between those who know how to overcome self-doubt and those who let it hold them back is inner strength. What's inside of you? What's, all of us have some form of inner strength. Yeah, what's inside of you? Uh, uh, they see self-doubt for what it really is, what it truly is, is fear. Okay? And this allows them to find the lessons in their failures, get up and keep going. Yeah. We've all have failed at something. But we didn't stay there. So we, we had to get up. 
So we got up and we kept it moving. We've all been knocked down by hurt. We've all been knocked down by people talking about us. We've all been not, knocked down by illness, knocked down by illnesses. But we got up. We didn't stay there. Okay? The more you begin to learn about your doubts and see how they can cripple you, you will begin to find out how much time you've wasted by leaning on the doubts than standing on your strength. Identify your strength. Name them. And concentrate on them. Let me say that again. Identify your strengths. Name your strength. You can even write them down. And concentrate on those strengths. Know what you're able to do. And you. there's no question about that. What you're able to do. Name them out. Call them out. And concentrate on them. Okay. And stop doubting yourself. Stop doubting yourself. Especially when you see the potential of greatness. When you come across it. Stop doubting yourself. There's great, there is greatness in us. Okay. We all have the potential for greatness. And to, and, and to develop and express our greatness, we must possess the passion and drive to live and our lives with calculated risk and attitude and an attitude of faith. Okay? Greatness lies in the journey, not the results. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm going to close, but uh, just to share some things, you know. I've experienced uh, my share of doubts in my life, uh, throughout my life. You know, I have, such as maybe I'm sure you all have as well. For for much of my life, uh, I, I was uh, able to manage it, you know, minimize it. Okay, but but I've had my share of doubts. Doubt in my faith. Doubt in my faith throughout my life. I could just uh, kind of ignore it and, and you know, and try to manage it. We've all been there, and but I focus on my faith and, and not my doubt. I, I had to, I had to in order to keep going. So, and 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 I got hit by you know almost a couple of years ago uh, after the death of my mom, and I experienced a level of doubt. I experienced a level of doubt that was just too big to ignore. Uh, and, and for a while, it sent me in a a faith crisis. I, we've all been there. We've all been through a faith crisis. And, and what do I do with this doubt and faith? You know, I had to question myself, okay, well, how do I need to handle this? Because, God, you know I love you, and you know I have faith in you, so what do I need to do? What what do I need to do? So, uh, but you have to understand, doubt, doubt can be a sign of weak faith. It can, but but the Bible doesn't condemn doubt, and neither should we. No, don't, don't condemn it, because we've all been there. Okay? Uh, our faith in God is often tested. And, and and we must wait on God's timing. You know, I'm an advocate of that. Wait on God will come at his time. And we, we got to wait on his timing and trusting in him even when things don't make sense. Okay? So so we can learn how uh, to overcome uh, in faith by trusting God and bringing our doubts to him. God knows I had to do a lot of that. I had to do a lot of that. Okay, and we can take comfort in knowing that no matter how overwhelmed or doubtful we may feel, God is always at work in our lives. Okay, as my husband uh, so so wonderfully uh, typed in, uh, the Bible even teaches us. I think it's in Mark. Uh, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. Yeah, we believe, but there are times that we get knocked down. We have to ask God to help us in our unbelief. I don't care who you are. I don't care who you are. You have been at a point of having doubt. And you wondered what to do next. You question yourself if you don't trust God. But that's not the case. And it does happen when your faith takes a hit. And that's what it is. Your faith can take a hit. 
but you still love God with all your heart. So stop doubting yourself. And when it gets too overwhelming, talk to God about it. Find a trusted friend, a friend, <laughs> that can help you. And you and that person can share some things together. And I guarantee you, whoever you find to talk with, they've been through something similar. So y'all can share. You know, so, so stop doubting yourself. And continue to trust God in everything. And I think my husband, uh, he typed in, uh, uh, this is for his Bible study for Thursday. Bible study will talk about nine ways God promised to provide for you. Can't wait for that. That's for Bible study moments on this Thursday, 4 o'clock. Uh, for my husband, Dr. Larry Black. Nine ways God promises to provide for you. I hope, to, hope you guys can join us on that. But thank you so much. And I pray that this segment of Tuesday Talk helped you. I really do. Uh, so stop doubting yourself. The topic was, why do I doubt myself? I pray that um, that uh, this have helped you a lot. Share this. Share this uh, on your personal Facebook page. I, I appreciate if you would do that so others can understand. You don't You don't have to keep doubting yourself, you know. Uh, and, and, and we uh, sometimes do a lot, you know, probably more than we should. But you don't have to doubt yourself. Not when you have a loving God that cares and will take care of you go to him i promise you he will he will help you and because he's helped me in my doubts he's helped me in my doubts and he will help you too but once again please share this and follow us on uh devoted to him i also have a a, a page a, a tuesday talk with t it's also a page if you can follow me on that as well but please follow us on Devoted to Him. We appreciate your prayers. We appreciate your loving our outreach ministry. Continue to pray much for us, and we will always pray for you. Let's pray now. Father, we thank you so much. We thank you for this time that we always spend uh, for Tuesday Talk. God, thank you for these who are faithful and listening to us. Uh, they know who they are. I appreciate them so much, and I love them dearly. God, continue just to bless them and, and guide them and keep them. Let them know that any doubts that comes their way, they can just knock that away because you are there to hold them, to keep them, and to, to strengthen them where they need. God, um, I'm thinking of a person that uh, I told them that I will continue to pray for them as they get ready to go through this walk with a surgical procedure. God, we ask you to touch them right now, strengthen them, take away their doubts, take away their fears. God, uh, we know that the Bible says that you do not give us the spirit of fear. But God, we do know that fear will creep in. We understand we're human. God, and you know that. God, so we ask that right now you would touch her right now in a special way. That she would be prepared uh, mentally, physically, spiritually. Uh, that she would be able to walk this knowing that you are there with her. God, uh, I have another friend who just went through surgery to God. And, and from all indications, she's doing quite well. God, we ask you continue to, as she recuperates from her surgery, that she will be strengthened, continue to guide her, continue to heal her, continue to watch over her and her family. Others, dear God, may not know by name, but you know who they are. There could be some that's on this uh, uh, line right now. By way of Facebook, God, they could be going through something, getting ready to make a difficult decision. God, let it be clear to them what they need to do. Help them to, to, to seek you first. Continue to, to guide them to call on you first before they make any decision. God, to make sure that the decision will be right and comfortable for them. God, we love you. We thank you so much. Now, God, we say um, continue to bless us throughout the rest of this day. We always careful to give your name the utmost honor, glory, and certainly all the praise. We love you. We thank you so much for being the center of our joy and the joy of our strength. It is in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. God bless you. Thank you guys so much. Love you very much.